Welcome to the ctwinereview.com. I'm Matteo Fagan. Today we have a special guest, PJ from the Alsace. film Alsace. And I said PJ because the name's a little tricky. Go ahead, you give you give it a whirl because Okay, uh, my real name is Pierre Julin. Pierre Julin. Pierre, Pierre Julin or PJ. Um, and um, we have um, he is uh, representing Vilm from Alsace, which is an iconic producer. Really excited to have him here uh, in Connecticut. And um, although um, they have been producing for many years, um, we have a, we're going to start with a new, relatively new um, um, cremant that they've brought in. Uh, tell it's us about this. And first, actually, no pressure here. Um, we're going to have him open this, and he's going to open it silently as it should be open. So give no it a pressure. whirl. Let's see. No pressure, definitely. In the meantime, actually, I can talk regarding Vilm also about the winery. Uh, telling about the iconic winery, definitely this has been actually created, this winery, in 1896 and we're talking about the first actually winery exporting Alsace wines into the US market. They started right after the prohibition and that's how definitely we turned into the fact that we are now kind of a leading Alsace winery onto the American market and people are definitely well knowing the notoriety of our, <laughs> of our winery. Let's get ready, no pressure, definitely. So bottle is actually 45 degrees and we're gonna actually twist the bottle way more than the cork so that when the air is getting in, the pressure will definitely not... Look at that. And there it is. You still Perfectly. get the bubble, don't worry, definitely. Perfectly executed and that's perfect and this is red. A lot of people actually open sparkling wine far too aggressively and there's a giant you can get hurt. Uh, there's Definitely. a lot of pressure uh, here. This is a point actually talking about pressure. This is regarding the fact that Cremant d'Alsace is made exactly in exactly the same way than Champagne. Méthode traditionnelle. You don't have the appellation Cremant d'Alsace if you don't do the méthode traditionnelle. And as during the méthode traditionnelle, every single step of the fermentation is happening in the bottle double fermentation, remuage, disgorgement, the pressure is definitely getting higher compared to sometimes some sparkling wine made in Italy or uh, in Spain, which are actually well lower in pressure because the carbonation of the juice is actually getting into the fat nut from the bottom. So you have here essentially a, a sparkling wine that is a made exactly like wine coming out of champ the Champagne region. Of course, as you may know that it can no longer be called, it cannot be called Champagne if it's not coming from Champagne. Um, so you have everything, uh, all of the, all of the, um, the, the traditional method that goes into making Champagne right here for a lot less money, ultimately. It's, it makes it a great, fantastic value. But let's, you know, let's check this out because Definitely. I've never tried this. I'm excited to check it out. So we can see first, actually, on the fine bubbles that we have over here, which is definitely the pretty impressive thing that we have, really regular, fine mousse developing uh, throughout the rim here that we have, nice yellow gold pale color. Uh, here, what we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about a blend. blend. This is a blend actually made out with Pinot Noir, Riesling, and Pinot Blanc. And a lot of people may wonder how Pinot Noir can be white, um, and um, you want to explain how you can have a Pinot Noir and have it look like this. I mean, simple, but but yeah, there is the point. Pinot Noir is a red grape, but the juice out of Pinot Noir is white. Right. Yes, it is true. So actually, it's all about pressing softly the grape so that actually the skin contact with the juice will not be heavy so that the content in the skin coloring the juice mainly mm -hmm. uh, it's what happening actually into red wine making process here will not happen and that's how we get the juice out of the red grape and that's how we get only white juice into here. Great. You get some really nice you can smell the you really can smell the acidity in this and you, you can it has this really nice sort of lemony limestone what is it in, in the area what is the um, the soil that we're the soil here in our area is definitely one of the lightest we have a lot going on it's pretty scattered we have like actually some limestone marley uh, we have some clay also definitely mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit of a blue slate going on uh, it's all about the fact that that's 
light fact onto the soil is bringing the main feature onto the wines and some great vitals, for instance, like Riesling, which is yeah. part of the blend today. Uh, breathing in and breathing out the warmth of the daytime during the night time. And it's how the Riesling grows the best. What is nice with that kind of lemony, zesty acidity we yeah. feel on the right nose here is uh, bringing up definitely by the Riesling fact. Yeah, it really jumps out of the glass at you. It's beautiful. What's your feeling? Yeah, it's uh, that's nice. Now this is and this is a brute. Exactly. Exactly. And so and being a brute, does it have to have? Are you compare it to champagne as far as the as far as the um, qualifications to be a brute. To be a brute or a demi-sec. Uh, I mean, brute is definitely regarding the fact also that Don, uh, the residual sugar content, we actually keep it uh, not as low as we can, but we don't want our crema to be overwhelming onto the fruity side. And uh, mainly the sugar is part of that also sometimes. Mm -hmm. Here we run actually 10.5 uh, uh, gram per liter. In residual sugar but it's certainly not brute I mean it's it has some nice fruit to yeah. it it's really pleasant it's not too dry um, but it's dry I mean it, it does have sort of a, a finish it, it has a kind of uh, I don't know, it lingers on where it gets drier almost. Exactly. The finish which is nice it's not an upfront dryness you get a lot of nice fruit lemon zest to it uh, definitely that minerality what we managed to do actually is to bring up into that quality wine the main feature of the three grape varietals we appreciated for that brand. Uh, for that brand. Here uh, the Riesling definitely leaving up this acidity, this actually kind of brute fact also because right. we have uh, that uh, nice, uh, how can I say, strength onto uh, this mm. uh, nice acidity going on. The Pinot Blanc is actually playing onto this fruit for oneness part yeah. and definitely the Pinot Noir is all the body built up onto uh, that blend that we have and that's how the structure into the mouse feeling is definitely also something that we feel. And this is a, of course fantastic. I, I'm always disappointed around this time of year. I'm, I'm excited to have sparkling wines of all, all types but it's, it's, it's frustrating that uh, more people don't drink these year round for any occasion for any because it's such a diverse food wine and it goes well with so many dishes of course you have. It's always a classic with any sort of spicy Thai food or or even fried foods, lightly fried. I, I've had this, um, this is something that I could see myself having with some nice, you know, like a fried calamari or yeah. um, some light, you know, some light dishes and it's, uh, even with sushi this would be fantastic. Uh, yeah, I was about to really say, nice. this is a, uh, yeah, the Great pretty sushi. clean finish that we actually leave yeah. people on is definitely the right side for appreciating that also on soup food. Right. Um, this kind of a uh, raw fish set on month, yeah. even with a bit of exotic part, you know, in sushi. What's something that they would, you would have in now, because you are from Alsace, yeah. what's something that, uh, foods that you generally see going with this or? Definitely, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I start my dinner, my dinner with that. And uh, my dinner is getting onto choucroute mainly. Uh, choucroute, with, which is that big dishes, you know, with uh, like uh, all that, uh, cauliflower that we have, we have also the sausages, we have the pork fat uh, is it, coming. Is um, it cooked or it's... It's uh, cooked steamed actually also. Oh steamed, yeah, okay. exactly. Cooked and steamed and uh, definitely for the entrance I go for that. I'm really a sparkling guy so yeah. I'm actually matching this with a lot of things. Uh, for me personally also uh, regarding another food style uh, which is not from Alsace as we were telling, Asian style is definitely yeah. one of the great for that. But I can see myself really just, this should come with a big straw. That you could just, I don't know. Yeah, okay, <laughs> it's, that's fine. Could you see yourself just putting a big straw in there and just bringing that to the to the movies with a little popcorn next to you? A little popcorn and a little, I think that'd be nice. I'll think about putting a straw maybe in the package. Yeah, you that think? Would I mean, that could be a new might trend. Work. It yeah. might separate you guys from you know Definitely. all the other bubble, <laughs> bubble houses. But it's nice. No, because it's just very drinkable. Um, I kid around, but it's very drinkable. It's really nice. Um, so, uh, who knows? There could be a new trend coming. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that, that would be something nice, yeah. As soon as we have the right to drink in the street, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> to drink in the street, yeah. 
I was in I was actually in uh, in Paris in 1989 for Bastille Day. Okay. There was a lot of drinking in the streets. Okay. Yeah. But, definitely. But that's but, an accurate date. Yeah. Yeah. Bastille Day was and it was the bicentennial as well yeah. in 1989, yeah. July 14th. Huge show on the Arc de Triomphe and everything. That was yeah. that was crazy. That was one of the craziest nights ever as far as the chaos that was there. You were running around. Firecrackers were going off. Oh, M80s yeah. were going off like crazy. I felt like I was in a war zone. It was. I mean, it was a, the biggest party probably in the world that year. And it was. Uh, it was very memorable. And it was great. And you know so what I was drinking? You know yeah. what I was drinking at the time? Good Heineken. Word. Heineken. Heineken. What yeah. a joke! I was yeah. in Paris for that time, and I was drinking Heineken. But you saw people with a bottle of Cremant and a straw. I didn't see. No, I yeah, didn't so see that's people. Out. <laughs> <laughs> but. If I could go back and do that over again, I would just change that beer to something else, of course, but oh well. So I was, you know, I was a mere child at the time, in 1989, so anyway. Um, okay, great. Great Let's, package. Um, what yeah. we have also definitely coming. That's nice really gift important. package. Exactly. Yeah. That's uh, coming right away right now. And we have this nice packaging here with actually uh, the hat of uh, the Pope living in the city where... Uh, the winery setup uh, here and based on the bottle. Definitely a nice yeah. packaging. I would say to sum up that is definitely looking and tasting way more expensive than it is. Yeah, I mean under $20, uh, well under $20. I just have to say, I mean, you look at this, a familiar a familiar bottle, um, uh, it's, it's pricey, champagne is pricey. And um, to get something, like that in this economy is a great thing. So um, uh, I highly recommend this as a fantastic, a fantastic uh, holiday or everyday wine, sparkling wine, Cremant.